Okay, today, the title of my message, for what difference that makes, is what's love got to do with it? And I'm so grateful that Pastor Moses brought that into focus with what he said earlier. I had no idea he was going to do that. <laughs> so, Father, can y'all help me pray right now? I just want to start with prayer. Lord Jesus, we want your way today. We want what you said, want said to be said the way you want it said. Holy Spirit, I can't do it without you. This is your plan, not my plan. So I ask you, God, to move through me, through through us, through our hearts and our minds, and have your message and only your message spoken today, Father God, for the purpose that you're sending out this word, that it will not return void. We claim that. We know that. But, God, I pray that nothing I say would get in the way. Nothing I want to do would get in the way. So I ask you for that. I claim that. I praise you for that. And I just thank you, God, for this day and this opportunity. Hallelujah. I got to say something first. It's Pastor Moses asked me how long I've been a Christian, and I've been one for 47 years. And uh, those that know me well know how excited I am about doing this. I'm about to blow up, y'all. Not that this is about me. It's not about me. But this is God's happy with this, and I'm happy because he's happy. And I, I just about can't stand myself right now. I'm about to jump around this stage. <laughs> Woo! So. My name is Carl, to those who don't know me, Carl Lippincott, okay? And in one sense, I'm just the man with the microphone today. This is not about me. This is about God and what he wants us to hear and what he wants us to do, okay? But I thank you, Pastor Moses, for this opportunity, and I thank you for your faithfulness in this church. And for the, most of the people I want to honor and thank, not that I don't want to honor and thank y'all because y'all are great, but they're not here. So if y'all watching and watching later, love you. Bless you. Thank you for your help to get to this place. When I wasn't myself, my faithful wife and other people really helped me a lot. So, hallelujah. Um, especially Jay and Marty. I hope they're watching some version of this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for them. Okay. Uh, would y'all go ahead and, and mute the, the mic for a second? I want Okay, anybody else want to join in that declaration? Now's the time, for real. Y'all want to say it? Go ahead on. Right now. Right now. Okay. Can you put me back on? <laughs> I just got to say something, because there may be people watching. I think right now I'm talking pretty much to a house full of preachers right now. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Glad you're here. So. We can start now. Yeah. But there may be somebody watching online that doesn't know Jesus. And I want, I want you to know that anything the devil says is a lie. Because when he, we've already praised him in those songs. He went to the cross, right? We know that. We know that from history even, without, without faith. But not everybody knows who he is. But I guarantee you the devil knows who he is. And we know who he is. Because not only did he rise from the dead, the Bible says in the book of Genesis that he will bruise his heel, right, the cross, but he will crush his head. That's right. So all the devil has is an imprint of his heel on the side of his head that tells him every day, Jesus won. He defeated him. He defeated death, and he gave us that victory just because he loves us and because we repented and turned to him. So there's nothing the devil can say about it. So to those that want to follow Christ, it's not the devil's call, it's yours. You make that decision. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Okay, today's going to be somewhat interactive. And uh, you, got, you got my mic, dude? That's the thing back there. What I'm going to ask you all to do at, at the right time is to, if you would read scriptures for me, in a sense, that with me, um, that we're going to get to. I think it would work better that way. And Brother Drum's going to walk around and, and, and hand the mic to you or hold the mic for you so you can do that. Okay? Can I, can I call on you for that? Because I think it will work better. And you're encouraged that. Yeah, just in case, just in case someone over here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need that one later, though. Just saying. All right, today um, you're encouraged to talk back to the speaker. It's okay, but 
please be respectful and keep it on topic, all right? My message today is about the two sides of a love relationship with our Father God, his side and then our side. Before I get into the actual message, I'm going to have to review and want to review some of the biblical foundation Pastor Moses has so diligently laid down recently. And by the way, by a show of hands, how many are thankful for what he's been doing in the church here? Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Moses. <laughs> All right, okay, I got to say, guy, guy, forgive me for saying this guy. I got to say this in front of everybody. Guy has got game. This man here is an intrepid soul. He will stand out in the middle of the road on Highway 441 just to declare, I don't know what sign you had, but <laughs> to people that Jesus is, is God and we love him and he was out there. Doing it. We had to call, we had to be like, you know, he was like sick him to a dog, right? And we had to get him out of there so he wouldn't hurt himself. <laughs> but that's the man he is. And I'm, I'm just I'm glad to know you, brother. Just telling you right now. Woo. Yes, sir. Um, okay. All right. Did you bring up that first slide, Matthew 16, 18? And everybody turn there, whoever's got the Bibles. I hope everybody does, because if you don't, you can't read today. All right. We all there? All right. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Christ is building his church. And what? All the powers of hell, nothing that hell does can stop it. Does hell have a choice in the matter? Absolutely not. Who's the it in this passage? We are the church, right? So he's building us. Okay, so go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. There's no slide for that one. Okay. Um, I'm going to read that one myself out of uh, the New King James. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So that's what I'm doing here today. I'm a saint who's been equipped. And thank God for other preachers and pastors in my life. Glory to God. Now I'm edifying his body, you all. Okay, referring to the scripture we read before this one, one of the synonyms of build is edify. Okay, so what does this edifying look like? Okay, let's stay in the book of Ephesians and let's look at the ver same chapter and look at the verses 13 through 15. Um, four, chapter four. Herb, would you mind reading that scripture when we get the microphone over there to you? Can you wait? I don't even need the mic. Okay. <laughs> Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, he just read that. And I want to, for, thank you, Pastor Moses. I want to focus on that word love. What's God's one sentence definition of love? Okay, that's, that's close, but he, what's it say in scripture, like word for word, is one sentence? Okay, God is love, right? That's how he defines love by himself. He is love. Go to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. Um, I 
Mimi, would you read that for us, please? If you're there. It, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not ha love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. Did I get that? Yeah, keep on going through 15. Okay, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Go on. Dear yeah. friends, since God loved us that much, We surely ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. Thank you, Mimi. Okay. Now we're going to get a little exercise, right? How many here, by a show of hands, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you personally? Dang it, I was hoping to get some no's because I don't know if I'm in the right place or not. <laughs> I want to talk to people that don't know, but that's, no, I'm, I'm serious. This is good. But I am serious about that, too. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Please keep your hands up, if you will. All right, how many have never doubted his love for you personally since the day you were saved? Okay, less of it. Okay, those that have your hands up now, please keep them up. How many have had personal revival? Let me say that again. How many have had personal revival in that respect and are currently completely convinced of his love for you? Please raise your hands. <laughs> All right, that's good. How many have had a deep person? I'm sorry, how many have a deep, personal, tangible relationship with the living God right now? Please raise your hands. Oh, y'all can put your hands down now. Thank you. I've got one more question along that line. I'm really asking two questions at once with this next one. By show of hands, yes, again, how many are fully satisfied with the quality of relationship they have with God right now? I can't raise my hand. I'm just showing you. If you want to raise your hand, you can. Okay. So by default, by not raising our hands, the rest of us are saying, we want to go deeper, get to know him better, and for him to know us more fully. Can we all agree with that? Yes. yes. Amen. All right. Well, you've come to the right place, and I'm right there with you. So would y'all pray with me again? Just a short prayer. Father, we ask you for a personal revelation of your love for us, for each one of us. Amen. All right, so here's the personal challenge part of my message. We have established through his word that he loves us. Amen? Amen? Okay. So how about you? Do you love him? Okay, but before you answer that, before you answer that, let's take a look at several more scriptures. So let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 10 through 15. It's actually 10 through 20, but I want to stop at 15. Um, Mr. J J I don't know, Ken, would you? Would you? Would you read for us, please? <laughs> 
stop at 15, though. 10 to 20, but stop at 15. All right. Let's see. Let me see it. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. Thank you. Now that's a pretty heavy, heavy kind of message. We, you know, that's the sort of thing that makes me want to examine my heart and, and ask God, you know, what's going on in there for real? Because I want to know. And by the way, now would be a good time to be a peacemaker. I don't know if there's anybody between anybody here, but I'm saying this in a general sense. Now would be a good time to be a peacemaker and reconcile if you need to. And, and if you can, with any brother or sister, if there is a broken relationship there. Because the Holy Spirit's all about that right now. He wants us to do that, to take the initiative with wisdom. If it's one where you can't take the initiative and it cause more harm than good, then don't do it. But if you can, go to them and, and, and try to make peace, okay, and love them. Okay, so maybe you have a question in your mind about whether you really love your brother, because I did. I was like, what's that look like? So let's look at the rest of that, that verse, the rest of that chapter part. 1 John 3, 16 through 20. Kimberly, would you read that for us, please? in that person dear children let's not merely say that we love each other let us show the truth by our actions our actions will show, will show. show that we belong to the truth so we will be confident when we can stand before God even if you feel guilty God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything amen feelings can be very deceptive but I don't want to focus on that. So we don't answer that question about do we love our brother by some lofty spiritual analysis. No, the question is answered by our actions. And each of us know what our actions have been. That's not hard to discern. You don't have to think it through. Did I do this? Did I do that? You know if you did or you didn't. Okay? So we just read... We just read about that action in verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So love is a choice. Love is a verb. Love is an action, and love is a person. Does everybody understand that? Okay, I'm talking about the person of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and God. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Um, so these scriptures are commands of God. And what did he say to us to do? Let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 29. Okay, hold on a second. Y'all, while y'all are going there, I got to get my notes in order. Something happened here. All right. Um, Jerome, would you read that for us? Or not, I'm sorry, you don't have your Bible. Okay, that'll work. Thank you.
Hello, hello. Oh, okay. If you love me, obey my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you <clears throat> other advocate who will never leave you. <clears throat> he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it is because it isn't looking for him, and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives within you now and later will be in you. Now I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world... Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, also will you will live. No, you also will live. Twenty nine. Keep When I am risen to life, rise to life again. You will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me, and become they love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Yeah. Judah, not Judas, a Zikrit, but I don't know those words, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself unto us, not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. And who doesn't love me will not obey me and remember my words are not my own what I am telling you is from the father sent me I'm telling you these things now while I am still with you but when the father sends the advocate as my representative this is the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you I am leaving you with the gift peace of mind and a heart and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is gathered than I am, greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen to so that oh, before they happen, so that when they ha do happen, you will believe. Thank you, brother. I'm sure pretty, pretty much everybody here knows that's talking about when Jesus was telling his disciples he was going to be crucified and the world would be glad and he'd be gone for a little while, which was three days, and then he'd come back and they'd see him again, which is recorded in the Bible. Okay, I, I had a sense, I think I should say it now, I had a sense when we were doing worship of, since we're pretty much, I think everybody here is a believer. I don't know for sure. I don't know about y'all. I don't know you personally. That's the only reason I'm saying that, not because of any other reason. Um, we're, it's like we were entering the, into God's living room. That's what it felt like during worship. And I, I still think that's where the Holy Spirit kind of wants to draw us in to talk to us in that fashion. Uh, I don't have to raise my voice. I don't have to make an emphatic statement or a point. The, the word of God has already spoken for itself, and I believe God wants us to respond to that now. And I'm going to give you something that I, that's my opinion. I can't directly uh, support it from Scripture, but I can refer you to Scriptures that speak to me and says it's true. But I'm saying from my heart, that's what I hear God saying, that he is calling out from the throne of God in heaven to his church and saying, do you love me? Do you really, really love me? Will you do what I say? Will you give your whole life to me and let me mold it and shape it the way that I want to? Because we're in a time when that's crucial. He wants a church that will show exactly who he is to the world and show it to your families. Show it to your friends. Show them the love of Jesus. Show them the love that you have by your actions towards them, that you're the real deal, the genuine article. Because... It's just always been his heart, but I just feel for some reason like it's a man, it's a it's an urgent thing right now in the place we are in history. So y'all can take that and do with it whatever you want to. But the reference in the scriptures are the um, the first, second, and third chapters of Revelation, where he's talking to the churches. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Okay. Can I have the handheld now, somebody, whoever's got it? Okay. Thank you, sir. Is this off? Okay. 
I, I can talk right. I'm not talking to this. Thank you. He, just, he was giving me a little tutorial about how to do this because I've never done this before. Um, I apologize to anyone that finds this rude, but I'm going to personally ask you, not everybody, but just a few people, Guy, do you really, really love Jesus? Yes. That's good. Sir, I don't know y'all, but I want to ask you the same question. Do y'all really love Jesus? Yes. That's good. That's good. How about you? Yes. Okay. You sure about it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> X-Man, how about you? With all my heart, soul, and mind. That's good news, sir. Glad to know that. How about you, Susie? Hey, you <laughs> do I really love him? How do I really know? Is it up to his standard? I want to love him. I want to choose to love him. I want to love him the way he wants me to love him. How do I know? Well, that's I say that I do love him. Yes. That, that's a good question. That's why we're, why we're going through this right now. That's exactly where I wanted us to get to and where God, I believe, is doing this for. So, yeah. So, so follow that through. Um, I pretty much, I pretty much know everybody else here loves Jesus, but I just, I, I'm not doing this just to have fun. All of this is fun. I, I, I felt like God would have me do this, but I wanted y'all to 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 confront that personally in the moment, right now. Okay. Karen, do you really love Jesus? Yes, but sometimes I think that he's not there for me because certain things happen in my life. Okay. Well, there's people, there's people here that can pray pray with you for about that. Um, I'm not sure who would do it today, but somebody would. Somebody that has that heart. We can do that. So I didn't want to disinclude anybody. If I didn't talk to you, it had nothing to do with anything other than just, I, for the sake of time, I couldn't do this with everybody. But y'all get the point, right? We need to look at this personally and real. Where's our heart really at? That first, the first verse in Revelation is really short. It's Revelation 2.4. He's talking to the loveless church of Ephesus. And he gets down, he talks about certain things, and then in verse 4 he says, nevertheless, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. I don't want to ever hear that from Jesus. I think I have before, because like I told you, I've been the ultimate Jonah. But this, again, this isn't about me, but I don't want to hear that when I stand before the throne of God. I want to hear something else. I want to hear him say, wow. That's one of them. I wanted to hear him say, man, you picked up the burden I gave you and you ran with it. You took what I said and you turned it into action. You laid your life down for the sake of somebody else. Right? Because that's really, I mean, why else are we here? We have families to love and that's good. We have places to be faithful. But if we're not showing the love of Jesus to somebody in a way that they can actually taste, feel, and touch, we're just kind of missing the mark, y'all. And I say that with compassion because I'm talking to myself. So it's time to get down and get right and get real with God and just dig in and do those things and quit making excuses. Because I have been the king of excuses, and I hate excuses. When people make excuses to me, I'm like, what is your problem, man? I know you better than that. You're just being sort of a wuss right now. I don't say it always to them, but that's what I'm thinking, right? Let's get real about it. And I'm not calling anybody a wuss, not doing that. Nobody online, not calling you a wuss. I'm just saying... That God has put his might and his power inside of us, right? When he says, I baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, does he mean that? Or does he, is he just kidding us? No, he puts fire down inside of us to get us beyond ourselves to do something about what he commands. Amen. Pastor, is it okay if I open up the altar right now? I didn't ask you ahead of time. Okay. For those that don't know what I mean by opening up the altar, I assume, I assume everybody does. It's just... Saying, come up to a place up here and talk to God. Standing, kneeling, whatever you want to do. But I felt like God would have us do that today. I'm well aware that you can make just a sincere of a commitment to God in your seats. It's not about looking a certain way in front of people. But 
there's something about this thing today that I thought we should do it publicly. Whoever wants to, there's no pressure on anybody. Okay? Let me get back in my notes just a second so I don't lose my place. But this is about making a public declaration of your love for Jesus. It's making like a here and now. I'm hearing what you say, Father God, and I'm going to do it. And I'm saying I love you and I'll do what you say. So that's what I'm doing, y'all, right now. Whoever wants to stand up and come up here and pray to Jesus and talk to him about it, come head on. You're not coming to me. You're coming to God. Years ago, I read a book called Wild Goose Chase, and it was the Celtic folk referred to the Holy Spirit as the wild goose. You couldn't grab a hold of him all the time because you never knew where he was going to go. I feel like the goose just flew through the room, and uh, I guess it's good to be caught off guard a little bit by the Lord. Imagine Moses was a little caught off guard when he saw the fire in the bush. <clears throat> if, you, if, you, if you need to, to uh, respond to what Carl just shared with you from God's word, and, so, and what's really neat is what you've all shared with each other. You know, I was sitting there, and um, I'm watching and listening to a church service, a gathering that is so not what you normally experience in church, having the people reading the scriptures and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is kind of weird. <clears throat> but I was looking around the room, and I'm like, man, this is so cool. Like, look at all these people hungry for the word of God. Like, that is so awesome, right? Usually you go into a church, and there's just one dude up front, and he's studied all week, and he's pouring out his guts to you. And everyone's just sitting there consuming. But it doesn't seem to be that here at Revolution Church. Maybe that's the sudden and momentous shift in the status quo that our world needs, is a group of people that are as passionate for the Word of God as the, as the pastors and leaders of the churches. And um, so I'm super encouraged to see that this morning. Um, I want to thank you, Carl, for, for doing that. For, I mean, just the first time ever. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Having done this now for 15 years and about 600 times, I'm going to give you a, a lesson. Never leave your notes loose. Massive mistake. So that was free. You don't have to pay for that. 
if, if, the, if we did an outside service, you'd have been done. All right? The wind comes, you're finished. So keep it in a binder. Let's, uh, let's take a moment and let's pray. And um, we're going to step into our time of, of giving. And I know that's just, uh, it's, a mixed, it's a mixed feeling kind of a time when we gather, you know. But I just want to let you know that, that the kingdom of God is moving forward. You know, he, hell will try to stop the progress of the kingdom of God, but it, it won't stop. It won't stop. Um, we are victorious in Christ who loves us. Amen. And so we want to make sure that we do all that we can in response to the love that God has shown us and showing love to other people. Somewhere in there in First John this morning, someone read, I think it might have been Mimi or maybe it was Ken, talking about if we say we love but we don't love another brother, there's no real love in us. Like that's not it. Okay, that's not real love. And, and here's the other thing I want to reiterate too. In the reading this morning, somewhere in one of those two readings, it said that God's, the fullness, the ultimate show of love that God could show is when we love each other. The greatest display, this is kind of shocking, the greatest display here on earth of God's love is not Jesus coming to the cross. According to the word of God, the greatest show of love is our response to Jesus toward one another. And that that's what the world is seeing. They're not looking at the cross yet. They're looking at us. And before they see the cross, they're going to see us. They're going to see the cross like you're seeing it right now. Through us. Okay? That's who we are. And so we want to show that great love for one another. We want to show our great love towards those who not, have not yet seen the cross. And we do that in part by the way we give generously, to be thankful for the love that he showed us, that we get to be part of the family, and then we generously, crazily give toward advancing this thing that we're a part of. So if you think that this is valid, if you think that being part of the body of Christ is something that others need and should have, then you give generously. And for those of us that do it, you understand what it feels like. And I say this again, like I think I said last week, in a time when our church is experiencing record low numbers in attendance, our generosity has increased. And I think that is so awesome to see the maturity in the body of Christ here at our church, reading the scriptures like you did, giving more, even though people are, there's less people here now and people aren't working. Less people, less money, more giving. That shows maturity in Christ. And so it blesses me because I get to see that there's actually some fruit in our ministry, and that is, that's awesome. So I'm very, very thankful for that. So let's just bow our heads, and as we always do, because we don't just tithe. We don't just throw whatever's in our pocket in a basket. We, we do what the scriptures say, and that is that we're supposed to pray about everything. So we, your word says, Lord, that we are not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And so, Lord, that's what we want to ask you right now. We want to pray. We want to talk to you, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us and just tell us, what thankfulness looks like. What does generosity look like for me personally? That's the prayer, folks. Ask him, what does it look like for me? How do I partner with you, Jesus, to advance your church, your kingdom, your purposes and your name to the ends of the earth? How would you have me respond to that call, Lord, on my life? So before any basket goes through a room, before you pick up your electronic giving or whatever it is that you've chosen to do, please take a moment and ask the Lord to guide you in the way that you should give. And we would only ask you to respond to that individually. So Lord, we're going to take a moment, give you the space that you deserve and that we need so we can hear your voice.